on stage to preach a word of God. Expect to receive a word of wisdom from God. The voice of God to you, the sword of the Spirit, cutting out evil things, changing your life. Oh, oh, you must go to church always. Come on, come on, come on. You must go to church always. on stage to preach the word of God. Expect a miracle, nothing is impossible. When you believe and say God's word is the same, expect your miracle, that's what you get. Church. Come on, you must come to church always. Come on, come on, come on. You must come to church always. to church always Ooh, something will be said a prayer will be prayed your life will be changed for good. oh yeah come on come on you must come to church always come on come on come on you must come to church always It's my, 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 it's my,
challenge, no time to waste. Do their work, 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 do their work. So sad perishing, do their work, do their work, do their work. Time no day, challenge, do their work, do their work, do their work, do their work. Hallelujah. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. You must go to church always. Hallelujah. The Bible continues says that respect every man's mother and father and keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Hallelujah. So when you come to church always, you are actually fulfilling the commandment of the Lord. Amen. So today, at this very special time of the day, we want to rise on our feet. We want to rise on our feet. Our pastor is back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. The Bible says when Jesus was leaving the disciple, he said, I will not leave you alone, but with a comforter. Hallelujah. Another comforter. And I believe that last week you enjoyed another comforter, which is our mother teaching when she was preaching about honor your prophet hallelujah yeah yeah it's nothing new it's nothing new jesus christ said another of the same kind is coming bishop didn't leave us alone he has left us with another comforter and he has come back in luke chapter 4 verse 14 the bible says when jesus christ was coming from the wilderness he came in the power of the spirit and our pastor is here today with a new anointing new spirit new oil put your hands pray father in the name of Jesus we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your mercies we thank you for your kindness and your love that has brought us to where we stand Lord this morning we say have your way and let your will be done Holy Spirit of God we cannot do without you fill us with your spirit lead us by your presence and Lord, let your perfect will be done in every life here. We give you all the glory, all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. And all the saints shall shout and say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Please be seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Well, forgive me, my voice is a bit host, uh, today, but... It's working. Amen. Amen. How many have been part of the Operation Labor to be Blessed that we started last week? Operation Labor to be Blessed. Okay, so if you've not been part, uh, you are encouraged to be part because it's the whole church, okay? Operation Labor to be Blessed. It's not for uh, me and the shepherd. It's for all of us. Amen. 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 Are you here? So I'm preaching for a very short time because uh, we are also in the operation labor to be blessed. From tomorrow, our fasting continues, okay? The whole of the week, we come to pray over here early in the morning from 4 to 5. We are here. I'm leading the prayer from 4 to 5. And in the evening, I come to lead a prayer from 6, uh, half 6, sorry, half 6 in the evening to half 8. So we pray one hour in the morning and two hours in the evening. Is that okay? Yes. So first week, by the grace of God, was powerful. How many were here? Yeah, and on the Friday, we had fantastic prayer all night. Amen. Amen. And God willing, this Friday also, there will be an all night from... <laughs> okay. Yeah. So... The operation labor to be blessed is just three weeks of operation, but it continues. The effect will be seen. What is operation labor to be blessed? Can we go to Proverbs chapter 24, verse number 3? Or 23, verse 4. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 23, verse 4. Can we read it together? One go. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thy own wisdom. Amen. Amen. So this is the foundational scripture. And our father has a book, hmm, Labor to be Blessed. And you need to get a book and read it. It's going to bless your life. 
So based on this scripture, we are embarking on the operation labor to be blessed. So when you look at this scripture, that's not what I'm preaching, but those of us who did not join the fasting and the prayer and you were not part of the operation, I need all of us, hallelujah, from tomorrow, please try and be part of it. We are here in, in person. 4 a.m. to 5, we are praying. And in the evening from half 6 to half 8. Amen. Amen. And what will we be praying about? We'll be praying for souls. We are laboring to be blessed. Operation labor to be blessed. So the Bible says that labor not to be rich. And it says that is to say, that is the, the colon there. That is to say, cease from thy own wisdom. In other words, if God does not intervene in your personal life, in your situation, all your aim, all your doing will be to labor to be rich. Are you here? Yes. Everyone that you know, if God does not get involved in our activities, in our affairs, in our situation, you will have only one goal, and the goal will be to labor to be rich. That is why he says that that is our own wisdom. But God says that cease, don't continue in that way. Are you here? Amen. Labor not to be rich. That is to say cease from thy own wisdom. So if God leaves us, or it's just like walking with a toddler, you have a little boy, okay? You are holding the hands, it comes along. When you leave the person, he is going to fall. Do you understand? In other words, any moment God is not with you or is not involved in your affairs, the only thing you are going to do is to look for money, is to do something that would make you rich. The course you are choosing to do in the university, you wouldn't choose a course because you like the subject. It will be which one will give me more money. Even when you are choosing a friend, or even if you want to get married. Now, even men are specializing in choosing women who can make them rich. Yes. What, a what a shock. Gone with the days that we know that a man should be the provider. Now, men are becoming lazy, kept men, looking for ladies with money to get married to. Hey. What, a what a shock. So, if you don't take time, if God doesn't get involved in your affairs, you are even going, your, your marriage will be as a way of even getting money. You will see somebody you love, but you say that, no, this one doesn't have money. Let me marry somebody that, that is our own wisdom. The Bible says, cease from your own wisdom. Are you here? Amen. So, operation labor to be blessed is coming back to the place where God gets involved. Or working in order for God to bless us. Hallelujah. Amen. Our own wisdom will always lead us to do things that we think that it will make us rich. Whether it will make you rich is another question we can't answer today. But you will attempt whatever you are doing. Your aim will be to get money. If you are going to school, if you are choosing a friend, if you are choosing a company, whatever. Even the fact that you don't give offering. You don't pay your tithe. It's part of laboring to be rich. Because you think that when you don't give, okay, you have money. That, that's the only reason. And what the devil has succeeded is that it makes you a carnal person. It makes you somebody that does not have the involvement of God. The supernatural ability of God is not released on your behalf. Are you here? Because the only time your life becomes supernatural is when God intervenes. Tell somebody, I want God to intervene. I want God to intervene. Hallelujah. Amen. So in, I'm telling you, that's why people who don't pay tight, they don't, there are things that you can do to get God to intervene. Winning souls, praying for people, anything that God, tight is one of them, offering is one of God. So winning. Are you here? These are the things that we need to do in order to be blessed. Amen. When you read Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, the Bible says, in fact, when you start from verse number 28, you begin to see, okay? Yeah, it said, And why take ye thoughts 
of free men. Consider the lilies. Can we read it from uh, NLT quickly? Because this week I need all of us to be part of the labor to be blessed. And the week after is the week that we are going to go out and do so winning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are praying for two weeks. And the third week we will not be meeting in person. I will meet you on Facebook or YouTube, 4 a.m. to 5. I'll be leading the prayer. That one not, not in person. Amen. Amen. What do you think? It's yeah, and the morning when you are going with your leaflet, with your invitation, you invite some people. And in the evening, after close of work or school, you also go and win. You write the name and the address, wherever the person is. And that Friday also, we'll have our last... Uh, all night. We'll get the names and we're going to follow them up until all of them are established in the kingdom of light. Can I have your loudest amen? Okay. Is it easy to understand? Yeah, so that is what we are doing. And I'm encouraging you to be part of it. Matthew 6 28, it says, can we read it together? One go. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make, make what? Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed like as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, Will he, why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying what we will eat, what will we drink, and what, okay, 32. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. See the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything. Hallelujah. So this is what brings us to Operation Labor to be blessed. That we will seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. Hallelujah. It's just like being a son or a daughter of a very rich father. But you are struggling, hustling, poor, because you are not doing what your father wants you to do. Seize from your own wisdom. That's the first one. You are trying to labor to be rich. And God says that stop, seize it, and rather come to a place that you will labor to be blessed. Come to a place that you will work for God. You will win souls. You will pray. You will, you will do the things that God will have you to do. Can I hear your loudest Amen. amen. So please, every one of us here, I need to see you uh, from tomorrow. Hey, sit down, sit down. No movement. When preaching begins, no movement. Okay, we just be moving. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. So every one of us, we want God to intervene in our affairs. How many will want that? Okay. Because the secret that you need to know is that until the supernatural arm of God gets involved in what you are doing, forget it. So the plan of Satan is to make you carnal, is to let you take away the involvement of God in your plans. That is what he did to Adam. He just came and suggested to Adam that why are you always listening to God to know what to do? Just eat this fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, then you wouldn't need God to tell you what to do. So that God's influence is not over you any longer. And he succeeded. And man fell. Do you understand? And the same way, that's why when you don't do the things God wants you to do, you are cutting the influence of God from your life. And you see that you'll be left with frustration. So let us not labor to be rich. Let's seize from our own wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And rather, we come to a place that we will do as God will have us. That we will seek ye first his kingdom 
and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us. Can I hear your ladders? Amen. Amen. How many understand the labor to be blessed now? Yeah, so please, I expect you to be part of it. Join from 4 a.m. to 5, right here, okay, from tomorrow, God willing, and in the evening from half six to half eight. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. So we are also concluding on our topic, those who honor you. Hallelujah. Those who honor you. And as we conclude, I want to share with you the result of this honor. The result of this honor. I'll give you just the points we go and our lives will not be the same again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Anna has results, those who honor you. And there is also result for those who dishonor. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. There is a result of this honor. And this whole month we've been talking about Anna. Are you here? Amen. That is why you see the HYP, Anna, your prophet. Amen. Amen. Our father, the prophet. We want to honor. And if you have not taken your seat to honor, there's different ways to honor. Were you here when we were talking about how to honor? One of the ways you can honor is to pay attention to the words of the person. Were you here when we spoke about that? That when your mother speaks to you and you listen, when you change your behavior because of what your mother has said, it's honoring. Are you there? Yeah. You honor somebody by paying attention to his or her words. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. And we also spoke about um, adapting. I don't think we spoke about that. No. One of the ways is to adjust. Tell somebody adjust. adjust. Yeah, if you are married and you bath twice, you are adjusting. Normally you bath one. Are you getting it? Yeah, yeah but because of your husband, you bath twice. You are adjusting to what you are not used. It's honor. It's a kind of honor. Bible says that when Joseph was called from the prison to come and meet Pharaoh, he shaved. He shaved. He adjusted. He had to shave to appear nice. So don't come as you are. Do, do you understand? I'm telling you, it's honor to adjust, to accommodate, to change. When you don't change, it's like you don't see the person. You don't see who the person is. Do, do you understand? Yeah. It's honor. If you change your behavior because God swears say something, you are honoring God. Your mother says, no, you are dressing in this and you don't wear this. And you listen to it and you change your dressing. It's an honor. People who don't change their language, their behavior, their dressing, their way of life, after, I mean, repeated warning and all that, it is dishonor. Hello? Yeah, yeah it's a dishonor. You talk to the person and say, that I, I won't change. I can't change. I shan't change. Never change. I shall not never change. Hey. I ain't change. Are you here? It is not honor. So all this, we've looked at it. Hallelujah. Are you here? So, you need to, we are concluding it today, so you need to at least know something that I have you decided to honor. What are the things that your parents have said? Have you listened to them? Have you done them? Have you changed because of them? You have a friend your mother has been talking about still. Yeah, and we saw that honoring with your substance is even the last stage. Because before you work, you may have to obey. You may have to obey. Do you understand? And, and honoring does not start with giving. It's what you think about somebody even in your heart. Are you here? Yeah. What actually your thoughts and your heart is towards somebody is what is honor. Hallelujah. You can be giving somebody a gift and in your mind, you are cursing the person. It's not honoring. Hallelujah. So today, as we end, uh, I want us to look at the result of this honor. 
the result of this honor. In John chapter 8, verse number 49 and 50, can we take our Bibles to John chapter 8, verse 49 and verse number 50? Are you there? Can we read it together? One, go. But I honor my father, and ye do this honor me. I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said what? I do not have a devil. I don't have a devil, but I honor my father. Amen. Amen. So the first thing you need to know is that this honor results in demonic invasion of your life. It must take a, an effort to this honor. And that effort that it takes for you not to honor or to this honor, we are seeing that that effort is certainly not coming from God. Are you here? Yes. You just were born into this world. You did not choose your mother. You did not choose your father. Whatever your father did for you to come, you were not there. Look at your difficult mother. Somebody was able to wrap her for her to do what she has to do for you to come around. Were you there when your father was wrapping your mother? Your difficult mother. Some of your mothers were carried at the back. What a shock. After borrowing money to pay Lobola. Different, different things. You don't even know. You don't know. You were not there. And you are now taking size. You say your father is a foolish man. You are sitting here. You don't talk to your mother. It takes an effort to dishonor. And I'm saying that that effort is not godly, it's demonic. So Jesus said that I honor my father. I honor my father. And that is the sign that I don't have demons. That the sign that you don't have demons is because you honor. I mean, what will make you not be thankful to your mother? What will make you not be thankful? That whatever it is. You see, your actions come from your thoughts. Hello? Hi. Do you know that you speak from your thoughts? You, you, whatever you are thinking causes you to speak. So what you are saying is coming from what you are thinking. And what you are doing is coming from what you are thinking. What is going on in your mind? Are you here? Yes. Yeah. So your actions, your doings, your work is coming as a result of what is going on in your mind. Hallelujah. So taking a step and saying that I'm not going to talk to this man, I'm not going to speak any good word to this man, I'm not going to honor this woman, it means that something is going on in your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. And that thought is not coming from a good source. Are you here? Demons are influencing you. Many people don't know how spirits speak. When a thought occurs to you, a spirit has spoken to you. Wow. Write it so that you don't forget. The voice of your spirit, the, the conscience, do you understand? It's what the, something occurs to you. When, when something occurs to you, a spirit has spoken to you. Now, whether it is a good spirit or a bad spirit, evil spirit that spoke to you would depend on what occurs to you. Are you here? If you even take this simple, uh, uh, what do you call it, statement, and begin to practice, you become very spiritual. You will know the type of spirit that are talking to you. Whatever is not making you say thank you to your mom or thank you to your dad, or thank you to somebody who has started a church for us to be uh, blessed in. Or somebody who created the world. Do you understand? 
and who created me and you for us. Whatever is making you not be able to say, thank you, God. Whatever is making you to say that, oh, there is no God. Even you, you can, we cannot say that you don't exist. Even you, we cannot say that. And you can imagine that, I mean, the one who created you doesn't exist. How did you come to be? You, you don't see a golden watch and you say, you say that the watch just appeared. There was a, what do you call it? Big bang, a blast, and the watch appeared. The watch has a portion that is glass, that is measured, and... How this complicated thing, even a car, we cannot, a car, with, we cannot say that something just erupted. Then a car came, part of it is metal, part of his car is shaped the way it is, they are apostles, they are seated. It, it is a bit too much. It is too much. I need a bigger faith to believe something like that. I need a bigger faith to believe anything like that. Hallelujah. And in the same way, your inability to honor, honor the one from whom you have come. We are saying that the source of that thought, it is not godly. It's something that is preventing you from seeing the truth. And it's demonic. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said that I, I don't have a devil, but I honor my father. Tell somebody, I don't have a devil. How will you know you don't have a devil? How will you know you don't have a devil? Yeah. So it means that if you don't honor your father, you don't honor your mother, whatever the situation or the reason is, it means what? You have a devil. Devils are fellowshipping with you. The reason why you don't honor your father and you don't honor your mother is because you are fellowshipping with demons and evil spirits. That is why I'm telling you that when a thought occurs to you, a spirit has spoken to you. But whether it is evil spirit or the Holy Spirit would depend on what the church uh, said or what occurred to you. Are you here? Hello? Yeah? So whatever is not making you say thank you to your mom, thank you to your dad, thank you to the important people that God has placed in your life, they have helped you when you were nobody. Whatever is making you dishonor them is demonic. Hallelujah. Are you here? In Luke chapter 22 verse number Three. This is talking about Judas. Can we read it together? One, go. Then entered Satan into Judas, same name is Cariot, being. Are you here? But before we read of this, do you know what Judas started doing? Somebody was honoring Jesus with an alabaster box and a perfume. He, she broke her own alabaster to Anna. And Judas got irritated and angry. He said, what is this waste? Why could we not sow this ointment for, for a lot of 300 penny so that we will use it to feed the poor? You see, so when people, when people begin, when people begin to dishonor and prevent others from dishonoring, what they don't even know is that demons are fellowshipping with them. But you see, here we, we see it. We see what the Bible says. That's why you notice that, ah, whatever is preventing you from honoring the people you need to honor, I'm telling you that it's demonic. Demons are invading you. They have taken hold of your mind. Because you really need to resist. Resist the good thought towards your mother. The good thought towards your father. All these people, I mean, you have your first hotel. 
you ever slept in, you were there for nine months on a waterbed. You were on a waterbed for nine months. Yeah. Free of child. And you ate the best of, you never struggled with bones, you never had to. You ate the finest. People will have to eat and the nutrients is what you will absorb. For nine months, somebody housed you in her belly, her cheeks, her nose, size changed because of you. Your mother has not returned to her actual size. She was size eight. She was size eight before she gave birth to you. But when she got pregnant and gave birth, she's become size 16. Hey, You think that your mother did not, she was also curvy. She had curves. She had, she had, and because of your mother's shape has changed from a Coca-Cola bottle to Coca-Cola can. Hey! She's now straight. Your mother, your mother used to be very nice. She used to keep her breast standing. Now she doesn't even mind. She can take the breast in public and put it in your mouth. It's like, have you been to a fuel station when they are? It's, it's like, fuel point, just take it. I'm told that there are ones that they can give a bad pass. But your mother was not having all these con- conditions. Because of you, you, you have sucked. Even the nipple of your mother became sore. You, you, you were chewing her nipple. And now you are not saying thank you. You are not honoring. She speaks, you speak back. She talks, you talk back. You are playing table tennis with your mother. You are saying that your mother is a cake. Her time is past. Hey, it must take a special effort for you to do that. And say that special effort that you are using to dishonor your mother is not, it's not godly. It's demonic. It's demonic. Your mother doesn't owe you anything. You rather owe him gratitude than thanksgiving. I'm telling you, your father doesn't owe you anything. Don't rise up and say, but my father did not look after you. My father did not look after me. What else should you be done for? What, what else do you need? You are now working and you cannot look after yourself. You are working and you can't look after yourself. Your father saw it early. Are you here? Thank God for how you came to be. Thank God, whoever God used to bring you into the world, even if your father is a drunkard, rise up from where you are and thank God for his life. Hallelujah. Your, your father is in prison. Go and find him. Go and find him. Through the counterback, talk nicely. He can bless you from the prison and your life will be blessed. If you dishonor your drunkard father, you, you will suffer a suffering that you will never understand. Some, you, you don't even know what it has taken. Maybe your father is in prison because he was stealing something to come and pay your school fees. You don't even know it all. You don't know. Don't, don't start. Hallelujah. Just be a son. Be a daughter. Have a soft uh, point towards your mother, towards your whatever they say. say that because it's my mother, I, I will do it. Because it's my I, I will just do it. That is what it means to honor. Change your behavior when they talk. Change your attitude when they speak. Change your dressing. Adjust. That is honoring. Hallelujah. Yeah, before we come to honoring, even with your substance, you must adjust your behavior. You must adjust. Are you here? And some of you who eat, 
You go to the house with your friends, you eat the food your mother has cooked, and you leave the plate and everything for her to come and clean it again. It's not honoring. A mother and a father is like a tree. See, a tree, when you are growing, it will give you shade. Then there will be fruit. You come and play with it. Then when you even die, it's the same tree that will provide coffin for you. It's like a mother is always there. And some people don't, don't even think about, about it. You have already made plans with your mother as like a help. You've not honored her words. You've not even honored her with substance. But you are looking forward to give birth and you will bring her from the village to come and save you again. To come and save you. Because you cannot pay, you cannot pay, uh, what do you call it? Nanny. So your mother should come and save you again. Is it annoying? It's like only what you can get. She looked after you. You, you have no, you, you, oh, are we changing? Oh, yes. Why is the church quiet? <laughs> so, the first result of this honor is what? Demonic invasion of your life. May demons live your life. Amen. The Bible says, and the spirit, Satan entered into Judas, being one of the twelve. That as people were happy, thanking uh, Jesus, breaking the alabaster box, and he, he was raged, enraged. They said, How, why? Why this waste? Why is it that the pastor is always respected? Why is it that daddy uh, is selfish? Why, why is it that daddy, are, they've given daddy big meat and my meat is small? <laughs> There's no fairness in this house. When they sh- uh, chicken that they shed, they give me the legs and <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> Some of us, you, you don't even understand that you cannot, you cannot sit where your mother sits. You cannot, uh, 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 what do you call it? You bring your friend to sleep on your mother's bed. Is it Anna? It's not Anna. It takes something special. Whatever is making you not Anna is destroying your life. When demons are finished with you, you'll be like the madman of God. You see that your life is destroyed. Demons don't lead you anywhere. Demons don't lead you anywhere. So Anna... In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse number 17, look at it. I'm trying. Are you there? Can we read it together? One go. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to no. Hallelujah. When you were not working and you were struggling, sure. you did not know that there was anything like commodity that you need to do. Hey. Now you have started working. You say it's your ancestors who went for the interview for you. Hey. You are brewing local beer to thank the ancestors. Okay. When you lose your job, I will be here. I will be here. Instead of being thankful and giving God a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Paying your tithe and supporting the things that God is doing. You rather look for a, a way to heap new gods that don't know. You have uh, the chicken itself has been eaten and three of the feathers is what is protecting you in your room. You've combined three feathers of the chicken that has been eaten long ago. Three feathers of a chicken is what is protecting you. Hey! <laughs> Number two. I'm trying. Number two. This honor results in you entering obscure darkness. Obscurity is to be hidden. 
Do you understand? If you are in obscurity, it means that you are not seen. But when you don't honor, you just you don't just uh, become obscured, but you are obscured in darkness. We, you can be out of sin, but you are not in darkness. So when you are not seen and you are also in darkness, it's a, it's a level. And I'm saying that it comes through this honor. This honor causes you to enter into obscure darkness. Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 20. We are just about ending. Are you here? Do you think that the thought that occurred to Judas even to betray Jesus was, was a good thought? <laughs> Can we read it together? One go. Whoso cursed his father or his mother, his lamb shall be put up out in obscure darkness. Hallelujah. You enter into obscure darkness when, when you don't honor, when you dishonor. What does it mean? It means you will not be important. It means you will not be significant. So you become insignificant. Yeah. And you, 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 you be, nobody will even notice you. Yeah. Because obscurity insignificance and not important. In darkness, frustration, struggle, are bound for all those who don't honor. It's the result of this honor. That's why pastors who break away from their fathers, you've seen some. Sometimes they think that they are the new thing that is coming. They see all sort of things. Then when they go, they notice that Charlie, it is not as you were seeing. You watch anyone who has broken away, say so many things. You, you notice that they, they are nowhere to be found. When Satan dishonored uh, his father, the disrespect, dishonor is rooted in satanic powers. I was telling somebody, I don't know what I find, that if you see a disrespectful person, somebody who disrespects authority, you have seen Satan at work. Satan is the one who can tell the one who created him that I'm coming to get you. People who fight their employers, fight ancient institution. You saw how Princess Diana was fighting the monarch, monarchy. And you see uh, people who rises up against ancient institution that has made you who you are. You don't even know how you came to be. Then you rise up. You think that you are some new thing. You want to disgrace your father. You want to disgrace your mother. You want to bring everybody down. It's the spirit of Satan. Yeah, Absalom. Somebody who rises against his father or his senior to destroy. Yeah. You, you, will, be, you will be jailed in obscurity. Not just that you will not be known, you'll be insignificant, but you'll also be in darkness. That means frustration, struggle, trouble. Will f- it's not a good thing. That's the result of this, Anna. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So when you look at the, at the church that we belong to, when we look at what God has done for us, are you here? We have a father that has taught about us as, a, as people in Cape Town. We will still be meeting in Kailicha somewhere. But he said, no, buy the property, the land at any cost. If you like, try and find out how much does a land cost. If you had even half of the amount, half of the amount that will buy just the land, you find out whether you buy a land. You want to do business. You want to buy... As though his mind doesn't work. He wouldn't even be here. Do you understand? It's not like, oh, I will be in Cape Town every month or every other month or once a year or twice a year. So uh, let me build a a church in Cape Town so that when I come to Cape Town. Do do you understand? He, He may never even be able to pass through. But he thinks about me, about you, about all of us. Get a land. Build something for 
my sons and daughters in Cape Town. Hallelujah. Yeah. And it would be wrong. It would be wrong that I, as the pastor, okay, who represents him over here, that I will not let you know who he is. As though I came on my, on my own. Do you understand? Like I was saying, you, the, the failure to acknowledge somebody is dishonor. Yeah, if an important person walks into the room, we need to acknowledge if I've heard that one of our pastors from Pretoria is uh, uh, coming over for honeymoon, if he had been here, I would say that, come, I will reserve a seat for the, he's not here, but the seat is waiting. He's not the founder of the church. He doesn't know how we came to be here. But just that he's even a pastor in the church. Look at the honor. Seats, nobody is sitting there for, for the person to come and sit. I, that, that is a pastor that the father has raised. How much more the father who has constrained himself? I've never thought about a name for a church. I've, I don't know what even occurred to him to say that the church should be called Lighthouse Chapel International. Do, do you understand? Somebody thinks about a church. Somebody starts a church, does all these things, register a church plant a church and do all that needs to be done. Buy us a land. Help us to build everything. Oh, I don't think it is too much for us to acknowledge him. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it too much? Oh. It's not too much at all. It's not too much. That is why when you go to Methodist, some of the Methodists now is called Wesley. To remember that the one who started is John Wesley. He has not said that the church should call Heward Mills. Even you don't know his name. Hey, I, 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 I. So, prophet, prophet, that he would miss. Yeah. Once in a while, we say, Anna, your prophet, to remember so that we don't, we are not filled with demons and ingratitude to say, Thank you, prophet, for thinking about us. I will never be here if he has not sent me here. Where will I have seen you? I will never know you. I will never have met you. I will never. It's not like I'm some wild guy. I say, Yo, I'm going to Cape Town. Then when I go to Cape Town, no. He said, uh, go. Go. I want to do this in Cape Town. Go and be the solution to what I... I, I that's how I come here. And that's how I, 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 I get to know you. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it not appropriate that once... A while we remember such a person. That is why I am Ben MP partner. He's doing crusade. I contribute every. I can't forget. I can't forget that I train as an accountant. Somebody taught me how to do my quiet time. Wrote books for me. Did, did you understand? Recorded the messages that he was preaching. That comes. Studied the different things, and as I was listening to, I've been affected to the point that now he could call me a shepherd. I become a pastor. He ordained me as a reverend minister and consecrate me as a bishop. How can I forget? <laughs> so I can say with Jesus that I have no devil because I honor my father. So if I'm thanking God for my father and I'm celebrating my father and he said that I'm worshiping a human being, you rather have a demon. You have, I'm rather, I'm grateful and thankful that somebody that I did not know from Adam would take interest in me and bring me up and cause my eye to see what I would never have seen and train me in different things, take me around. Hey, show me how to travel. How to pack? I used to travel with big suitcase. <laughs> but as I, I travel within his company, taking me to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, uh, Manila, to South Korea, to uh, uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, different places. As your father, my, my biological father that I thank God for, very great man of God, who helped me, brought me up, never had the privilege and opportunity to, to take me on this uh, uh, global tour. And somebody that is not my biological father, my spiritual father, steps in and takes me around. 
is it too much to honor such, such a person? It's not too much. It's not too much at all. Somebody that I learned even dressing from. When I joined the church, I saw how he would dress white top, yellow tie or green tie, one color tie. Oh, you will, be, you, you will like it. Wear a uh, uh, suit. Not the, uh, uh, the, the uh, things he wears now. When he was a pastor like me in the cathedral, when you come to church, you will see the suit. How to learn how to dress. By watching somebody who knew how to dress. Even matching colors. Even watching how to talk. His vocabulary was affecting me. Some of you have learned English through the messages you've been listening to. Is it too much? It's not too much at all. Hallelujah. So when we dishonor, we don't acknowledge him. We don't see who he he is in our life. That he's contributed, even if he's small, he's contributed something. And some of some of us, it's not small. Some of us, it's big. It's the reason why we even do the things we do. Can I have your loudest amen? amen? As you honor, you will not be in obscurity. Amen. Yeah, the desire of Satan to cause you to be insignificant, to be unimportant, and to be shrouded in darkness, in struggle, in pain. Is taken away from you as you honor in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Number three, this honor results in you being replaced. When you dishonor, you will be replaced. Yeah, anyone, and you, you should also do it. Anyone that don't see who you are, and doesn't honor you if you in your own, in your own circle, replace the person. That was the story of Vashti. Vashti was a queen because she was married to the king. And the king called him when he had visitors that, look, I want to show off your beauty. I want them to say that I have married a beautiful queen. My wife is beautiful than all their wives. Come. Dress up and come. Let the people see and they will be jealous of my wife. They will see that I'm important. Through you, the people will begin even to respect him more. So he sent a message for the queen to come. The queen said, "Mm, I ain't coming anywhere. I won't come. I shan't come. I can't come. Never come. many times does the king have a banquet? How many times does the king have visitors, international visitors, that bring your beauty and do your cut work and shake your bottles a little? Shake it a little. Let the people see that, hey, I've married an important person. What a shock. No, sometimes you see a lady walking, it's, it's walking or it's giving a walk. You see, hey, it's like the earthquake. <laughs> I say, hey. The king said that, my queen, come. And make, move like an earthquake. Let the people know that I'm the king. Wear, wear your things and come and give a walk. And do, shake the place. Let, let, let people tremble in there. What a shock. Every lady should learn how to walk. A lady should not like, walk like a soldier, walking in power. No, no. A lady should learn how to walk. Hey, some of the ladies, when they are walking, it's like the, uh, some swinging, something like, as about to fall. Say, hey, 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 hey. Uh, it's part of it. Part of it. Part of it. Don't spoil my message, but the queen, Vasti. Vasti said, I'm, I'm, I'm incoming. You like the title. You enjoy the title. They say you are a queen. People will respect you because you are married to the queen, uh, the king. Now rise up and, and behave like a queen. You say you ain't coming anywhere. I ain't coming anywhere. So in Esther chapter 1, verse number 
15 to 20. Can we read it quickly? Hey, I'm in trouble. My time is up now. It's our church, you see. <laughs> you, you encourage me like that when I'm in trouble. <laughs> Esther chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. What shall we do hmm? to the queen, Vashti, according to the law, because she has not performed the commandment of the king, Ahazos, by the chamberlains? And Memukan answered before the king and the princess, Vashti the queen has not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king. Azizos. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad to all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. When it shall be reported, the king Hazesos commanded Vaisti, the, the queen, to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media Say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. Are you there? If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of Persia and Medes, that it be not altered, that is, they shouldn't change the law, that Vashti come no more before King Hazesos, and let the king give her royal estate to, unto another that is better than she. Are you there? Yes. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all the empire, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to the great and small. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says that the king was angry. He said, hey, why did my wife not come when I have? And he asked, what, what can we, how do we solve such a problem? And one of the people who helped by name Memukan rose up and said that what Vaisti has done has not done to only you, but it's done to all the men. If we don't take action, and it's reported in the province, in the empire, that the king called the queen, and she refused to come, and nothing happened to her. This is how it is going. Every home is going to have such a thing. That if you, oh, you be quiet. Even the king. Uh, <laughs> Even the king, uh, vice did not mind the king. You, are you a king? Who are you? Who, who are you? Are you a king? Even the king couldn't control vice. Are you? Hey! So Memu can say that this thing will bring problem in the whole province. Look, husbands will be despised. Husbands will be maltreated. So already words are going. So if we don't act, because what she has done, vice has done against you, is going to be reported and uh, there will be commotion. In the, in, the, in the empire. So let us write a decree, a law that should never be changed. That vice should be sacked. And another person who is better than her should come and replace her. Are you here? Yeah. So this honor will cause you to be replaced. If you don't honor, some of you, you don't even honor the work you are doing. That's why you fight with your boss. That's why you answer back. That's why you are late to work. Or you don't, before you notice, you are losing your place. And one thing I will tell you, always think this way, that there's somebody better than you. It's a good mind to have. Always see what you are doing and where you are, that it's a privileged position. That there's somebody who can serve in that capacity better. Than. Are you in the office? A manager, a pastor? a bishop, a reverend, a queen, whatever you are doing, have the mind that there's somebody better than me. And my replacement is just waiting. If I disrespect and I dishonor, somebody better than me will just take over. 
What a shock. What a shock. Have you watched football matches before? As the football match is playing, and there are, there are people who are always trotting, trotting on the bench, and they are doing, they are doing something. They are doing that, and they are waiting for you to be, even though you have not said you are tired, even though you have not said you will not play, there is already a reserve bench, somebody who is trotting, is doing something, is jumping. Say that, when will this person be taken off? Uh, there is somebody who is on the touch line. So treat wherever you are as a privileged position and honor the person who has put you there. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you a wife? Honor your husband. Don't say that, oh, my husband is not a normal husband. Hey, what is a normal husband? What is a normal husband? Your husband call you, say, you make too much demand. Even better husbands who look after uh, their wife better don't make such demand. Hey, that's what you have. That is what you have. Somebody is waiting for what you don't like. And the painful thing is that when you are replaced and you see that what you were despising, somebody is honoring, you were calling him, hey, See ya, come here. But a new person can say, oh my Lord, then it's paining you. Then it's paining you. Then it's paining you. My Lord and my King. You are calling him with his name. Hey, come here. Oh, you, you, yeah. One, one guy told me, he said, hey, my wife is a specialist. I said, why? He said, hey, when I send her, she turned around and sent me with the sending. I said, how? He said, Pastor, anything I will say, she will turn around and use, send me. Send, said, for example, I asked her, oh, will you give me the remote? He said, okay. So then he will turn around. Please, if you can take this remote, it will be good. He said, anything will turn around. Hey! He said, Vashti. Are you here? Do you, do you like where God has placed you? Do you like where God has placed you? Anna. Anna. Because lack of Anna, this honoring, will cause you to be replaced. Maybe you, you are singing. You are dancing. In some churches, there, there is nothing for any member to do. There's nothing for any man. It's the pastor and the wife. These are the two important persons. The pastor is the head. The assistant is the wife. Oh, everybody is a church member. There's no important person. But you have been brought up. You're a dancing star. You're a singing star. I'm not the place. Rehearse the song well. Dress well, decently. Come and dance, smiling. Don't come and dance like we are worrying you. Dance. <laughs> Yeah. Are, you, are you a wife? Your husband goes to work, goes to track, comes in 1 a.m., 12 a.m., 11. Rise up from your bed and come and sit by your husband to eat. He is not a, a scully. He shouldn't tiptoe into his own house. I will never do that. I can't. I, I need everybody to have to wake up. Shall I? I have done nothing wrong. When I come 2 a.m. or 3, everybody should wake up. Everybody should wake up. I'm in now. Okay. You are joking. I cannot tiptoe. It's like... I need to wear socks on my uh, 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 shoes so that nobody hear my... Am I a TV in the house or what? And your husband tap you. Your husband... T taps you. That, what did you do? Mm. Yeah. Don't behave like we are. When your husband tap you, know, straighten up, say, hello, my dear. Let the sleep go. You're teaching good. Let the sleep go. Sure. You cannot behave like, like you preaching. were. Yeah, I'm preaching for you. Take note, those who have not married. Cannot let your husband feel that he's doing something wrong. 
He selected you among all the thousands of ladies. All the thousands of ladies. He has selected only you. That is the only one. The only one he has. And you, you, you are making the man struggle in the house. Even the pap, when you do or salsa, you don't dress it nice. They, ah, you put it and you throw the pan on the table. So this is your food. Then it goes, shh, then he has to catch it. Oh, what has this man done wrong? Will you get your, your husband is moving by, then he taps you, they say, I don't like that, I don't like that. <laughs> will you get that even your husband will tap you? Who, who should he tap? You are doing that before you know that he has gone to make a mistake and tap somebody else. Uh-huh, you say, you say, mercy. You say, you are saying mercy. Who sh- should he tap? Who should your husband tap? You want him to tap somebody else. Your husband says that when you are in, in the house, don't be like a boy. <laughs> Respect it. When you are going out, you are looking nice. When you get home, then you remove your hat. Then you put it there. Then you are moving like, uh, uh, like a, uh, Bob Marley's uh, daughter in, in the house. It's like your, your husband is the one who doesn't need to see you nice. One, one t-shirt. A N C T shirt that has faded, torn. These are the things that you, your husband look at. And when you are going out, then you will make your eye. Then you just, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Then you polish. Then you'll be going. Then even when your husband sees you, you can Is it my wife? Is it my real wife? The man has not be decent also in the house. Who told you the husband want to look at uh, scavengers in the house? <laughs> Don't take a cloth and wrap it around your waist as uh, something that you are going to dash away. No, be nice. Hey. What a shock. Before you notice your lack of honor. Why is it that when you go out, you don't feel the hot and the heat and the this thing, but when you come home, you say, it is hot, the then you, 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 you remove the thing. You are joking. From now, you are going to wear it in the house in, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> hey. What a shock. Helping us. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wives, sit by your husband when they are eating and talk to them. Oh, how was your day? How? <laughs> Don't look for some, some, some strange girl to be doing what you have to be doing. Don't forget that you have a place, honorable place. If you refuse to do that, you see that a shrimp somewhere has risen up to overtake you. God forbid. In the name of Jesus. So Anna and you will not be replaced. Number four, this Anna results in you being lightly esteemed. First Samuel chapter two, verse number thirty. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Hallelujah. Are you here? So lack of honor causes you also not to be honored. God said, look, I had actually vowed that you were going to be a priest in your own household. But because you have dishonored me, I have also changed my mind. Hallelujah. Yeah, you see, Love begat love. Anna begat Anna. When you sow love, you will reap a bumper harvest of love. Hallelujah. Don't think that you are going to be nasty, you are going to be rude, 
only for you to receive all the good things. No. No, whatever you are doing is a seed you are sowing. Amen. Amen. And God, not even a man, God. He said, if you honor, you'll be likely esteemed. So may you honor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And the last one, but not the least, is that this honor results in you not seeing the power of God. When you dishonor, you don't see the power of God. In Mark chapter 6, let's read from verse number 2 to 5. Mark chapter 6, verse number 2 to 5. Is it in your Bible? Okay. Can we read it together? One go. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Mercy. When you see Jesus laying hands, then it means there's trouble. He said, even the dead, he will say, the last of comfort. But because of this honor, they were finding out who is this. Is he not a carpenter? Don't we know him? It's my age mate. You describe, oh, is he not a, a, a Makorikori? Is he not a Zimbabwe? Is he not from here? Is he not a, I know him. Look at his accent. When you begin to be nepotic and you begin to, you, you, it is this honor. Like the woman who made Jesus at the well. He said, what has Jews got to do with Samaritan? Meanwhile, you are a cursed woman Jesus made to show her mercy and deliver her from all the problems that she had. Five husbands has already died. And somebody is coming to help. And he said that the Jews has nothing to do with the Samaritan. But Jesus said, if you doubt knowest the gift of God and who it is, who is speaking to you, you would have asked him for the living water. Hallelujah. Amen. So being a portic, being tribal, being uh, uh, xenophobic does not allow you to see the mighty hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's dishonor. When they began to find out about, is he not a carpenter? What is his profession? Oh, he did, he did uh, chemistry. He did engineer. He's a physician. He's, he's the doctor. He's a lawyer. That is not what works. When you go to the hospital, do you find out the school that the, uh, the doctor went to? Do you say that, oh, this doctor is too young to attend to me? So those things does not allow you to see the person in a certain way. Say, when? When did he become anointed? When did he become? How can he be doing so great things? Is he not a carpenter? Is he not Mary's son? Is he not the one that we don't know whether Mary uh, was properly? Uh, is it not the controversial figure? Is it the one? Hey, I wish of us. We, we need to be careful. We need to be careful. Don't we know his sisters? His, his brother James and Joseph and Judas, Simon, are they not here with us? How come he's doing this? When you find out and you dig around people and be, be, be careful about people who let you see negative things about people that you respect. You've always honored your pastor. You've always seen your pastor in a good light. Anyone who lets you see your pastor in a bad way is Satan himself. Because when that happens, you can never receive. If somebody tells you a bad story about a pastor, so as the pastor is preaching, instead of receiving the anointing, it's the bad story that you have heard that you are saying, hey, look at how he can preach. Is it the same person that they said this? He said, you cannot even enjoy what is coming from the person, but you will be concentrating on the bad things. You become critical. You become your eyes. Is it? And Jesus said that a prophet is not without honor. That is to say that prophets, pastors are honorable, 
but in their own hometown, they are not honored. And the Bible says, he could dare. Not he would not. He could not. It means that he wanted to. But because of this honor, because they did not reverence, they did not honor him. Honor determines the flow of the anointing. The lower you go, the, the, the higher. You see, the steep, the slope becomes steeper. And the anointing is oil. So if you are equal to your pastor, there are people who are equalizers. So the anointing doesn't flow. It's an equilibrium. It's an equilibrium. And there are people that the, the gradient is very, very, uh, 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 I mean, short. It's not steep. So the anointing doesn't flow. You'll be in a, a church that people are getting healed, blessings are going, but because of lack of honor, you see that the nothing works for you. But the more you honor, the more you, 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 you increase the slope, you see that it flows, the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. There are people I have told, you are buying a car at the, at the cost of 30000 and exactly that is what happened. You are getting a car before the year end. It happened exactly. Yeah. Like one lady said, uh, tell, call Bishop and tell him that the, uh, your, uh, his daughter, whom he loved, is sick. Hey! So call the, call the bishop and tell him that the daughter is sick and she, uh, he will pray for him. And instantly, she had a healing by other people. When you honor, the people who honor Jesus, they will say that I am not worthy even to come, for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word. And my daughter will be healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. People came. They tied the hem of his garment. They got healed. But other places, they had to lay hands. They had to equalize this. And the people who dishonor did not see the power of God. Did not see the miracles. Did not see the awesomeness of the gift that Jesus had. If Jesus could not do mighty works in a place that he was not honored, I don't know how you are going to do anything when you are not acknowledged and honored. Are you here? Are you here? So, as we close today, I want you to decide that you will be somebody who honors, and you will not be somebody who dishonors. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah, because when you dishonor, it results in you not seeing the power of God. Could it be that there's so much power for people to... I, I tell somebody, all you need to do you started work. I, the first that I, you need work. Forget about everything. Just get work. When he got a work, he said the next thing is press to be full time, not a casual worker. Do, do, do you understand? Yeah. You move the step. Somebody, a student, come and say, "Don't do anything. Just learn. All I need you to do, stop whatever. Just learn." Then you see that the person doesn't. It's very important. You will see the power of God. Yeah. Somebody with complicated situation, or I told a person that, do the Bible project. Start reading. Read the Bible like a storybook. Start from here. Finish here. And as the person, depression goes away. Anxiety goes away. You see, when you respect, the doctor may be small, but he says that you take this, uh, uh, take this pills, take this tablet, take it two, three times daily. Don't say that, oh, I'm going to take uh, two or three is too much. I'll take one uh, once a while. But when you honor, you notice that you will see the power of God. Hallelujah. May the power of God be revealed in your life, in your situation, as you honor in the name of Jesus. As we come to the end of this series, I pray, I pray that wherever and whoever you have this honor, you will turn around ask for forgiveness, and have the appropriate attitude. Hallelujah. Yeah, so that you will not be replaced. So that you will not be lightly esteemed. So that the power of God will be seen in your life. Hallelujah. So that you are not invaded by demons. 
so that you don't lose your place. Hallelujah. May anything that you have lost through this honor, let it come back as you decide to come back to what God will have you to do. May the Lord bless you. May he lift his countenance upon you as we honor in the name of Jesus. And I need every one of us. I need everyone. And before we close, I will give you an envelope to give something substantial. Not to me. We are going to honor our prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Does he need it? No. Not at all. Even if he needed it, he would not even ask me, let alone you. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't even ask me, even if he needed it. But it is, we must see the greatness of our father, the love he has for us, his thought towards us, that he has built us a synagogue. He has, look, 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 look at it. Somebody came here and said, I thought that the main church was this one, but this one is the small, this is the big one. But some, if you are here, you can easily not even see what you belong to. And the greatness of the thing that God has done for us. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Now I pray that the result of honor will be, find, will be found in the lives of everyone. Lift us. Let your power be seen. May we never be replaced. And Lord, may demons be far from us because we've chosen to honor and to do what is right. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Well, before we go, before we go, close your eyes with me. If you are here and somebody invited you or you came by yourself, I want to say, Pastor, pray with me and pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I don't want to go to hell. I would like to be in heaven when this life is over. Will you please pray with me? If this is what you are saying, I need you to lift only your right hand and I'll pray with you. Only your right hand. Stand where you are. Lift it high above your head. High above your head. Lift it high above your head. God bless you. God bless you. I can see. Yes. Acknowledge God by lifting your right hand. You want to be born again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me here. I want to give my life to you. This is what you are saying. Now with your hands lifted, I want you to do one last thing. If you've lifted your hand, I need you to move and come to me. Come, my sister. Yes, my sister in jeans, my sister in black, my brother from the back. Come, come, come. From the back, from everywhere. Yes, come. Right here. God bless you. God bless you. Come. Come. God bless you. God bless you. Right here. Come and stand here. God bless you. Come from the back. Come from everywhere. My brother, come. Right here. God bless you. Yes, you are coming. Quickly, come. Quickly. I'm waiting for you. Come. Yes, my brother, come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm waiting for you. If you are coming, come. I'm waiting. Here, please lift your two hands to the Lord. It's an honor. It's an honor that God has given you this afternoon to be his daughter and to be his son. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, this afternoon, I come to you just as I am. Please forgive me and wash me with your blood. From now, I believe in you. Jesus, you are the son of God. You died for me and you rose again. Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart as the savior, the Lord and the master over my soul. Please write my name in the book of life. From today, I belong to you. From today, I am yours. I will follow you 
all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. Amen. Say, Satan, from now, I don't belong to you. I belong to God. I belong to Jesus. I will follow Jesus all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for the lives of your dear ones. We lift them before you. That the grace of God that brings salvation will appear to them. Fill them with joy. Fill them with virtue. Fill them with your holy presence. And Lord, let them know you. Let them love you. Let them walk with you until the very end. Thank you for your mercies and your kindness. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, look at me. This decision you've taken is the best decision you've taken in your life. The decision to go to school made us able to write and to read. The decision to work put food on our tables. But this decision will take us one day to heaven. And you will never regret it. So I want you to go with our brother with the card there. Follow me. He's going to pray with you, talk to you for a few minutes, and you'll also be saved there. Something wonderful. Your life will not be the same. Amen. So please, I want you to follow them. Can we? Let's follow them. God bless you. Okay. You want to take your book? Yeah, it's okay. Oh, you can do better. Put your hands together for them. The rest of us, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege and honor to learn from you and to be changed by your word. Lord, may we be sons and daughters who honor so that the blessings of honor will be with us. Whatever this honor brings, let it be taken far from us that we will be sons and daughters who honor truly in Jesus' mighty name. Bless our lives. Let it be well with us. Establish our going out, our coming in. And Lord, help us every step in the way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. All right. Okay. We need to go. But before we go, I'm sure. Look, when I was taking the offering, most of us had not come. So I know that you've not paid your tithe and you've not given an offering. And I'm going to take it over here. All right. Okay, so take your first offering first, if you are not here for the first offering, and take your second offering, then your tithe. I think you should stand here, yeah, so that there's no uh, confusion, yes. Okay, so I need you to take your first offering. Some of us, you were not here when I was taking the first offering. And take the second offering and also your tithe. This is the church account number. If you are paying your tithe, send it to this account number and use your cell phone number and your first name as the reference. Somebody will contact you, send you the covenant blessing, and your life will not be the same. Let us pray. Oh, I cannot see hands. I cannot see movement. Please give something substantial. Pay your tithe. Give an offering. Help. Help in a real way, not imaginary. That, oh, will five run help? No. It may not help much. Give. Give something that can help. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity we have to give. We give because we love you. And we love you because you first loved us. May our lives not be the same. As we honor you with our substance, as we honor you with our tithes, with our offering, let your word be fulfilled. How you said, you cause men to give back unto us, press down, shaking together, and running over. How you said that you open the windows of heaven and bless us that there shall not be room enough to contain it. Lord, we call on you. Let this be true about us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please rise up.
with your tithe, with your offering, bring it right here. God bless you. God bless you. Every one of us, we are coming to the front. Every one of us, come to the front and give it. This is how I praise I throw my hands up to you, my Savior. I'm going to stand up and give you everything, 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 all that I have. This is how I praise it. I'm going all in, going all in, where yeah, I'm on fire. I'm going to dive in and give you everything, everything, everything. Oh, some all people are still sitting. Some Rise up, everyone. We are bringing our offering here. This is how, this is how I praise it. Uh, this is how I praise it. This is how I praise it. Hello. Okay, it's now, it's now time for the boosters. Everybody you may have given, but take the boosters. Forgive me, my, my voice. But take everybody, take your booster. Take something. The booster is the little seed that becomes a great tree. A great tree that the best of the heads. Fowls of the air come and rest on it. So take something extra. Something. Every one of us. And let's pray. Father, thank you for the boosters. As we encourage the offering, as we give extra, Lord, also give us something extra. Push us forward. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Okay, let's go. You may have come, but you can come again. Quickly. Oh, you brought me through. Oh, you brought me through. My praise belongs to you. Oh, oh. Come on, glory to the king. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. To the one who reigns on high. Everybody sing. Everybody sing. And the praise is free. To the one who reigns on high. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. To the one who reigns on high. Everybody sing. Everybody sing. And the praise is free. To the one who reigns on high. I'm still waiting. This is how this is how I pray. This is how this is how I pray. Hallelujah. Father, may our giving be pleasing to you. May we not be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Please be seated for a minute or so. Okay. I want to pray for all the Ben MP partners. All the Ben MP partners. You are here. You are part of the Ben MP partners. Can you rise to your feet? These people help our prophet, the crusade team, healing Jesus crusade, with a token every month to push the work. Can you come to the front quickly? Let's pray together. Lift your hands and let's pray. God bless you. God bless you. All Ben MP partners, God bless you. God bless you. Maybe you want to be a partner, you don't know how. Uh, it is very easy. You can support with 100 rand a month, 200. You don't take that contribution from your tithe. No, it's a separate one. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your wonderful people. Thank you that through the financing of 
uh, Ben MP, many souls are reached and many souls are coming into your kingdom. Father, I thank you that with our little and with our much, you can bless your work and cause the power of darkness to be broken over your sons and daughters in villages, in places that we can not even go ourselves. Lord, our prayer is that every one of us who have given, you also send somebody into our families. May our siblings not end up in hell. May our mothers not end up in hell. May our fathers not end up in hell. All the people we love and are so dear to us, Lord, somehow, through our giving, through our help, let them also be catered for. I pray that, Lord, wherever we have given, you also raise people to give back unto us. Praise them shaking together and running over. I pray that the supply will never cease. I pray for abundance. I pray for more than money. I pray for longevity. I pray for your favor. I pray for good health. I pray for a blessing that only you can give. Let it come over us. And let all the glory be unto your holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You may please take your seats. God bless you. Thank you very much. All right. How many books do we have? Okay. Our father has written a new book, The Word of My Patience. The Word of My Patience. Wow. What a title. So, uh, we don't want to be long here, you know, that you want to help. Wow. I want to read this book. The word of my patience. The word of my patience for Abraham. How Abraham waited patiently. The word of patience for Jacob. You know, God promises you things that he will do, but sometimes we are impatiently nagging God. Hmm? Jacob was told, God said that, even when he was not born, God said that the younger son will be greater than the elder. But at a point, he wanted to help God by stealing the birthright of his brother. He couldn't wait for God to bring him to where God has said. This book will let you have patience. In Hebrews, the Bible says that we should patiently wait. Do you understand? Yeah. I like the scripture that says, after we have done the will of God, ye have need of patience. Uh, not that you have done something wrong. After you have done the will of God, you have need of patience. Can you put it there? Yeah. For ye have need of what? Patience. That after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Sometimes you have done the right thing, but you, can't, you don't want to wait. You, you get it? Yeah, it's wrong. Doing the right thing even will cause you to wait for the right time. Hallelujah. This book will let you have patience. Hallelujah. Amen. And you begin to learn how different people waited for their time. Amen? Amen. Okay. So you want to, uh, I'm launching it. Come for it. You want to help. <clears throat> Oh, come. 500, 400, 300, 200. Come. You want to. God bless you. You also want to. God bless you. You want one. How many? <laughs> Some of you have not got books. You need the books. The books will change your life. Two. The husband and wife, when they come, they don't get one. Those who are getting one, you also need two because you are married. You want what? One. You are not married. Are you free? Yes. Free advert. Okay. Yeah. She, she, she is fine. Yeah, wedding gun. 
is left with one. I don't know who is coming for it. It's left with one, eh? Okay. Good. Fantastic. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed? Okay, we need to go, but before we go, uh, let's remember the announcement. From tomorrow, our operation, Labor to be Blessed, continues. We meet here 4 a.m. to 5 in the morning to pray. And in the evening, half 6 to half 8. Is that not it? And on Friday, Tuesday, we are here. Our service time is from 6 to 8. On Tuesday, we are continuing. And on Friday, the all night continues again. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, there's a camp coming on. The last camp of the year. Come, come. Okay. From the 17th of November to the 19th of November, that is your last opportunity to be in a camp before the year ends. Amen. amen. Oh, I did not hear a lot of Amen. Okay. So please make sure you register and be part of the camp and your life will never be the same. Amen. Okay, let's rise to our feet. When is the concert? 13th of November. Okay, so the choir, praise and worship, the Psalms, we are going to have concert on the 13th of November. 10th. So invite somebody. Concert is coming on. 13th. 1-3. Yeah. Please make sure. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be awesome. Hallelujah. So please uh, note the date and invite people, invite all your friends, your workmates, and come, and your life will never be the same. Amen. Amen. Look at a person by you and tell the person, my sister, sister. I don't know why. I I feel so blessed. blessed. Ask the person, is it because I sat by you? you? Tell the person, "I I have decided to honor you. Ask the person, will you join me for lunch? (laughs) What did the person say? (laughs) Tell the person, my brother. If he's a sister, don't say my brother. You bring confusion. Tell the person, my sister. I want to tell you something. The five results of this honor. Number one. number one. Mention it. What is number one? Tell the person demonic invasion. If you dishonor, you will be invaded by demons. Number two. Tell the person. What did the person say? Hey, you have already forgotten. What is number two? Hello, what is, what is number two? I heard somebody saying replacement. No, it's obscure darkness. Tell the person number two. You will be hidden. Become insignificant. And not important. But that is not you. Because you are going to honor. Number three. What did the person say? Tell the person, I don't want to replace you in my life. So honor me properly so I don't replace you. In Jesus' name. Number four. What is number four? Tell the person, as you honor me, I will also honor you. Tell the person, even my honor will be greater than your honor. But if you dishonor me, you will be lightly esteemed. And number five, 
Uh huh. Tell the person. Tell the person you will have to honor me so that the anointing upon my life will work for you. But if you don't honor me, you will not see the power of God working in your life. In Jesus' name. Tell the person, I like you. You are such a nice person. That is why you are my friend from today. In Jesus' name. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, fellowship, contribution, participation, and the 60,000 children of God, which includes all the important people for my life, and the blessings of and harvest, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. One. God bless you. May he lift his countenance upon you. Let the week that we have begun be a blessed week. May the favor of God be your portion. And let it be well with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please listen to me if you are here. And today is the very first time you are worshiping with us. Are you here for the first time? If you are here, with the, can you wave? Today is the very first time. Okay, meet with me on my left. That is to your right, in front here. If today is the very first time you are worshiping with us, please come to the front, to the left. God bless you. God bless you.